thanks so much for joining me today. Great to be here, Nick. Thanks for having me. Well, this is the uh, the first episode of Bourbon and Birds. And, oh, my. Uh, we have uh, some Kentucky bourbon here in front of us. This is uh, Larceny. Um, to your health. Hey, to your health. Yes, sir. Do we actually drink this in the morning? Bourbon's not just for breakfast anymore? Mm -hmm. Mid-morning snack? That's right. I've not even had breakfast yet. This is uh, this is breakfast today. I'm like corn in the morning. This is truth serum, man. <laughs> Drink too much of this, and we'll be analyzing for quite some time. That's right. This is. Uh, <laughs> I, I forgot to warn you. This is barrel proof. Uh, so it's uh, it's a little over a uh, hundred uh, on the, on the record scale. There. I'm trying not to fall asleep. <laughs> But look, I want to jump in first with uh, Fancy Farm. You sure. Name the MC. This isn't your first time at Fancy Farm, though. You've no, been on I've the been stage before. before. <laughs> um, right. What was it like speaking? Uh, you know, when you were uh, in office and, and about to, to to join office, what's that feeling like from the stage, about to give a speech like that? Uh, terror. Yeah. It, it is nerve-wracking to be up there. What do you do to to calm the nerves? Are, are you preparing the speech weeks in advance? Uh, walking through it, knowing your, your your lines of attack, or how do you, you know, as as the candidate, not as the MC, but as the candidate, what, what do you what do you do to just get ready to just kind of get punched in the face by everybody? In the <laughs> uh, you know, when you're in the secondary offices, let's call them uh, state auditor, secretary of state, as I was, you're not exactly the target of the day, and you're not first up either. Right. So by the time uh, you make it to the microphone, the crowd is a little bit more calm. Okay. Uh, still the tradition is there and when everybody packs in and you're on that stage with so many people you know and admire, uh, your heart is racing. It has to be. Uh, last time I spoke I guess was in 94. Okay. And it was, you know, it was on that front row. Magic moment. Really a, a exceptional experience. Uh, I, I think so much of the tradition, and so do so many people. I run into people all the time who say, Fancy Farm, what's it like? Uh, is Fancy Farm as cool as it looks? Uh, Fancy Farm is on my political bucket list. Uh, should be. It's anybody you want to meet in Kentucky politics over the course of two or three years is going to be at Fancy Farm. The West Kentuckians expect you to come, and uh, in many ways it's required, required attendance. So how are you preparing for uh, the MC responsibilities uh, for this year? I'm trying to look back on uh, other Fancy Farm moments and bring out the best in what Fancy Farm represents. Uh, it's really Americana in, in a very special way. Iconic, historic, this would be the 141st. Uh, my grandfather spoke there 60 or 80 years ago. Uh, it's he was from West Kentucky, a family tradition uh, in the LBL area, area and land between the lakes. So just to connect with all of that will be an emotional thing for me. It's great that KET covers it. For a lot of people, that's, that's where they see it, that's where they get it. Uh, you'll be there, a lot of news folks and analysts will be there. Uh, tremendous amount of fun uh, to get everybody's perspective. Mm -hmm. Young people show up too. Now a lot of people get bust in and they're a little pumped up and fired up. Uh, I'm going to ask them to be reasonably respectful and a little bit polite. And I'm probably more prepared for them right now than I am for the <laughs> folks right behind me that I get to introduce. Uh, but my, my job is to make sure people understand the, uh, the stature, significance, and opportunity to hear the speakers who will be on that stage. Uh, many are in office now. Uh, some looking for higher office. It's it's an exceptional moment. Yeah. Uh, Al Gore spoke there famously. Uh, George Wallace back in the late 60s uh, before he had his uh, epiphany and right. renounced the very thing he'd stood for, segregation. Fascinating uh, history. The food is out of this world. It's great. Um, I was there as a candidate in 87 when I was running for state auditor. Mm -hmm. And I was a little dressed up for the day, as candidates tend to be. And I was in the food line talking to people. Great way to see everybody. And a woman looked at me and said, you look like a stockbroker from Lexington. Why in the world would I be for you? And I said, ma'am, my wife is expecting for the first time and I really need this job. 
and she died laughing and said that's that's the best answer i've heard <laughs> so i kept that uh, comment for some time after that's good yeah so you know it's off cycle right but you know we already sort of have this shadow gubernatorial race you alluded to to that a little bit uh, we'll have some of those folks uh, agriculture commissioner ryan quarles mm -hmm. is certainly looking at a race uh, he gets to speak other other folks don't if you're a candidate do you appear to or a potential candidate do you appear at fancy farm and work the crowds two years out absolutely you do mm -hmm. and there may be some um, effort and fancy farm has its rules they don't change the rules according to the year uh, we don't have the nominee for democrat for senate next year but we have a presumptive favorite right uh, might booker get to speak uh, if so that sets up a potential interesting conversation uh, with the incumbent Rand paul who's certainly invited and senator paul has been there before uh, leader mcconnell is often there I, I can't think of a time when he's missed maybe once uh, you know it comes right up against when the senate is finishing and the congress is finishing so it's very tough timing uh, for our washington leaders often to have to fly in and uh, short on sleep the big breakfast that the parties hold uh, that morning and then uh, fancy farm is a physical experience it, it's it's a lot of engagement with people uh, in a very good way it tends to be a little on the warm side yep. so. <laughs> it does it does so wait, wait a second you 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 expect there's a conversation that charles booker would be on the on the stage this year i've Is raised that, that point okay. uh, would that be the case if we get to fancy farm and there is nobody else in the race. Would he be allowed? I'm not sure. He certainly would speak at the Democrat breakfast, I sure. would think, sure. um, which would be uh, important for people who want to hear that. It's, uh, it's a good question. Uh, but that's up to Steve Elder and the committee and, and the rules that they've set and followed for some time. Uh, no exceptions. However that works out, it'll be good. It'll be fascinating to watch that, that take place. Yeah. And certainly if, uh, if he's not speaking, as you said, He'll be uh, he'll be speaking at the bean supper the night before, oh, that's right. and the and the breakfast that morning. Yeah. Uh, do you do you imagine for some of those other shadow campaigns as, as we look ahead that anybody starts to announce uh, potentially, or or is it too is it too early? And is that the venue to do it at? It's probably not the venue to do it. I mean, more announcements these days are highly orchestrated and put together. I mean, you could announce there; that'd be exciting. Um, be fun for us yeah not likely to happen though what you will hear and see is candidates uh, and potential candidates and office holders talking about the future look we always say that it's about the next election right. in Kentucky we often mean it's about the next governor's race <laughs> <laughs> even though we have two highly prominent US senators we still look ahead to 23 and as soon as 23 is over we'll be talking about 27 right uh, and we'll talk about the others uh, who are incumbents now too, uh, they do get to speak. Harmon, I believe, gets to speak. Ball gets to speak. Uh, Adams gets to speak. Uh, they're all popular and prominent and likely to be seeking other offices. Right. So that makes right. for, for a good stage, in my opinion. Yeah, I can remember covering Fancy Farm, and I guess it would be 13, and Holly Harris is in the crowd with the Comer 2015 sign. <laughs> out of all the other signs, she's the only one sort of alluding a couple years out. That, right. Watch out, this guy's gonna run. So it'd be interesting even i like watching the, the crowd that's that's part of the fun i think a lot of people do well for comer it's absolutely mandatory <laughs> this is a hometown virtual hometown situation for him it's his part of the state uh, he's their congress member uh, i'm very much looking forward to what he has to say well i want to pivot to the senate race with okay. you uh, that's the next election we have up it's a, it's a bit of a sleeper at this point in time um but what do you what do you expect here? I, Rand Paul hasn't done a ton uh, fundraising wise in the last couple of years. Uh, is he just sitting on his laurels a little bit and thinking he doesn't have a contest, or does it? What do you what do you make of that and, and what that shows? Well, he has been active. He's had some fundraising mm -hmm. um, accumulated lately. Right, uh, he was at Mar-a-Lago not that long ago. <laughs> right, uh, that was a good night, and he's uh, had a fundraiser in Central Kentucky, I believe, and his last report uh, showed some significant fundraising so that will be ramped up before we leave the governor's race i just want yeah. to mention you know savannah maddox is talked about by people yeah and out in the state not just in her district uh, mayor keck of somerset has expressed an interest 
and also um, Governor Bevin has been talked about yeah. uh, as a potential return candidate. Um, I'm sure people will be watching Fancy Farm to see if they're there. Uh, great time to meet people, whether you're running or not. And it also kicks up your ID for sure Absolutely. Uh, when you think about what that does. You know, Bevin lost that Senate race to McConnell in 14 and kind of went underground. He had all that money spent against him. Mm -hmm. And I remember Bevin would pop up at these little events. And I'd hear he was here, he was there, and just, eh, you know, it's Bevin, he wants to be participating. And then he showed up at Fancy Farm. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing him uh, that morning at the breakfast and pulling him aside and saying, hey, you think about running for something? And he just gave me this grin, this kind of like <laughs> grin. <laughs> and I said, I don't know yet, we'll see. And so it'll be interesting this year. I think Bevin is, as you said, that type of person, that type of candidate, that if he is in a race, whether that's Senate, gubernatorial race in 23 that, that he would pop up that he'd want to let people know in some way that, that he's he's active he's out there and before we leave this let's not forget the incumbent um, you know in, in the past year and a half things have been dramatically different I mean Trump goes into 20 with a excellent economy and many uh, many good vibes that he can do well um, be setting that economic agenda and the agenda gets reset. Uh, Andy Bashir takes the oath in early December and just as his father ran into a great recession, he's hardly 100 days in office and the agenda he set is set aside for the agenda that sets his course and path. Right. Uh, I haven't seen a poll where he didn't get 55-57%. Uh, at one point he was peaking some 20 points higher uh, in the right. early days of right of the pandemic. Uh, so back to Fancy Farm, uh, it'd be great if the governor makes it. And the advantage to turning the corner after June 11th and all of us getting out more is that the travel the governor hasn't done, I'm sure he'll want to do. Right. Uh, a lot of, you know, he's made trips, but in and out. Um, for him to be at Fancy Farm will be important. And, and as MC, I hope everybody comes just for the experience that everybody has. Certainly. And, and particularly for the KET audience as well. So Renee Shaw does an extraordinary job always. And she'll be, she'll be all ready to go. Yeah. Well, I, I hope the, the governor comes as well. He certainly could use, as you said, that, that, that bit of travel and, and definitely needs to connect with, uh, with Kentuckians mm -hmm. as, uh, as we're post-pandemic. Um, and, and, you know, I look forward to seeing what he has to say as well. I mean, he's going to have to make uh, convince Kentuckians that the steps he took during the pandemic were for their benefit. And then whatever the economic downfalls that happened during that time, that he can recover those in the next couple of years. Uh, Bob, what do you make of uh, moves from President Biden to uh, toss some money to, to states and put a timer on that money? Uh, be in 2024. Uh, this is the American Rescue Act. Do you think that this is part economic recovery, part politics? Uh, which in Kentucky, we've I think we've got four billion dollars to spend before 2024. Do you think that that helps recover uh, any downfalls in the economy and helps uh, Bashir, uh, you know, cut ribbons and, and do infrastructure projects and that kind of thing? Well, it certainly does all across the country. I mean, every decision has a political element to it. And we can have multiple political interpretations of what the money means. But we have, at the local level and at the state level, extraordinary resources now that I've heard Leader McConnell say and Governor Bashir say, do the legacy projects that are long overdue and last a long time. Let's do things that matter. Let's seize the moment. There'll be a lot of scrutiny of how the money's spent. But with that framework of those two leaders and many others saying the same kinds of things, uh, we could see some significant changes and improvements uh, for all parts of Kentucky. Uh, we have an urban-rural urban -rural divide mm -hmm. that became more pronounced during this last session of the legislature, at least more noticeable to people like you and me and, and many others. Uh, we have population shifting from the rural to the urban. Redistricting is gonna be a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, you could very well have Comer, who we mentioned, who covers all the way west to the Mississippi River, uh, picking up a county like Franklin County to make that district balance out. Right. You already have Brett Guthrie from Bowling Green, Kentucky, representing Nicholasville. Right. 
he lives 15 miles, that, I mean, his district is 15 miles from my house, uh, which is represented by Andy Barr. Okay. So it's almost a dual uh, congressional representation there, just in that central Kentucky area. You pull one more Congress member in, uh, and that, that will be a highly unusual step were it to happen. Uh, but we have to change uh, here and around the country. The rules have gotten smaller most everywhere. The urbans have grown more. Mm -hmm. The state grew at three and a half percent, the nation at seven and a half. I mean, a couple of censuses from now, we might see ourselves uh, on the edge in terms of keeping our number of members of the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, several states lost, including a couple of our neighbors. So all these factors figure into uh, how you set priorities as our key leaders are doing. How do you uh, give the rules a chance to have some economic and population and other mm -hmm. recovery and vibrancy uh, and, and continue to stoke the economic engines of about 10 counties that essentially fund the deficits of the rest. Right. That's, that's tough math and tough politics. It is. Well, speaking about tough politics, uh, question for you about President Trump. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, uh, you know, we can make arguments about his presidency, but uh, even Republicans split off from the president on January 6th after the, after the Capitol riots. Right. Uh, Mitch McConnell came out strongly against the president. Uh, he's been in this uh, war of words, but Trump is still popular in Kentucky. What kind of a tightrope does that leave for these candidates uh, who are both in the gubernatorial race and in the Senate race. It seems like Rand Paul is pretty pro-Trump right now. But uh, what, what do those Republicans need to do to talk to Trump supporters? And, and, and is there a larger fight here for the soul of the grand old party? Probably not so much of a fight here as you see other places. But it's obviously on the mind of Leader McConnell, given what he said about Trump and what he said about the Congresswoman from Georgia being a cancer on the Republican Party. I might add, perhaps on the democracy, and when we look at the extreme comments of some on the left and the right, that's really the, the dilemma for both national parties, not to let those essentially minor voices become the major point of conversation. You mentioned Trump in Kentucky, and one of his key appointees is Kelly Kraft, who you haven't brought up, but who might well be a candidate for governor, ambassador to Canada. She served in a UN capacity first and then ambassador to Canada where she grew uh, by all measures uh, in that role, mm -hmm. uh, first woman to hold that job, and then the United Nations where by every evaluation she did uh, an excellent job carrying out the president's uh, goals and objectives globally. Uh, she was also from rural Glasgow, Kentucky, grew up on a farm mm -hmm. and went to the University of Kentucky and so on. Um, so we, when you look at Kelly Kraft and the connection to Trump, that will be a factor. And then you go straight to Ryan Quarles, for example, who is immensely popular around the state uh, with not just the Republican base, with a lot of people in agriculture and business. Uh, and then to the other prospects, it really sets up quite a lot of competition and who can kind of out Republican the other. Right. Uh, while. Governor Bashir with the mantle of incumbency and uh, a popular governor for sure in, in terms of what polls say us, to us right now. Um, long way to go, but uh, it sets up a, a continuous conversation about the governor's race. We'll talk about it every week. It's not so much underground when you watch where people are and what they're doing. Right. Um, Notice today that one had one of the eight or nine um, you know, stop at a popular restaurant in downtown Hopkinsville. That was the auditor, um, Mr. Harmon, uh, made a point of letting people know, uh, which probably matters in Christian County more than it does here. But that's, you know, that's the retail popularity you have to have to do the political job. You can't be wholly and totally unpopular and carry out the public agenda. It's just not in the cards. Well, on that point, and you brought up Kraft, uh, obviously married to Joe Kraft, who's mm -hmm. a billionaire, Lions Coal. Uh, all that money that they have, ideally you would spend that in, in most races on television. But you just said, Kentuckians like retail politics. We're post-pandemic now. How do you use 
use that money effectively to talk to normal Kentuckians and to show up in places like Auditor Harmon is showing up or uh, Commissioner Quarles is showing up in restaurants. How do you how do you take that and use that advantage that you have and and make a case to Kentuckians at their level? Historically, it's been said Kentuckians want to know their governor and they want to meet their governor. Uh, there are probably tens of thousands of people who've met our top leaders, as you think about it, and, and given the wide circulation that they've had for a number of years. Uh, in order to be governor and to win in 23, uh, you've got to get out and see people. Uh, and Rand Paul's probably been a lot of places looking at next year, over 12 years. Uh, and Booker's been to some. He had some impressive rallies at the end of his race a year ago. Uh, he's got more geography to cover than Paul for the first time. Uh, but Senator Paul and uh, former Representative Booker will be out on the hustings a lot. Uh, it's uh, on the one hand, you're putting the organization and effort together and putting together the working capital to fund it. On the other hand, you're you're out meeting people, and that's really where the uh, where the magic happens for candidates. That's where you learn things and see things, and uh, people appreciate the visit, and you appreciate the experience. Well, Bob, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to leave it there. I want to say one thing. Yes. Folks need to be on Kentucky Fried Politics. You're doing excellent work. Uh, it's required reading, required, required watching. Uh, great to be with you. Thanks for not being too hard on me. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. It's anything over bourbon is, uh, is going to be an easier conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you.